Welcome back to sports, I'm Kaylee Glider. The Florida gymnastics team is back at home tonight getting ready to take on the Georgia Bulldogs after falling to Alabama on the road last week. WFT's own gymnastics beat reporter Courtney McKenna joins us live from the Odom. Courtney, how big is this meet for the Gators tonight? Well, Kaylee, this matchup is huge, not just because the Gators are looking to get back on a win streak, but because of all the history that comes with the Florida-Georgia rivalry. One of the most outstanding facts is that Florida and Georgia are only two of six schools in the NCAA ever to claim that national championship title. So you know that Florida-Georgia rivalry is unlike any other, and last year the two teams met in Gainesville, and the Gators took that one by a 1.35 margin. It was close throughout. The Gators were actually trailing Georgia through the third row but when the Gators took the floor, Bridget Sloan and Keetra Hunter's perfect tens surged the Gators past the Gym Dogs to ultimately claim the win. And now Sloan is still out with her ankle injury, so you can count on freshmen like Kennedy Baker and Alex McMurtry to help post high scores to make up for Sloan's marks. Action is set to get started here in the Odom in a little under two hours, so get yourself some dinner and come on down to check out the action. Reporting for WUFT Sports, I'm Courtney McKenna. Thanks, Courtney. The Florida women's basketball team had numerous opportunities to overtake the Missouri Tigers last night, but the Gators couldn't make the shots when it mattered most. Junior Carly Needles had a season-high 18 points, shooting 5 for 5 from the arc in the first half. However, the Gators couldn't find any of that success from the first half into the second, managing to connect on just 25%. Mizzou took advantage of UF's struggles, going on a 20-1 run with just 12 minutes in the game. The Tigers wouldn't look back, winning 68-52. After the game, Florida head coach Amanda Butler was unsure of what her team needed to do to change mentally. I love coaching them and, and I love how hard they work for each other in practice every day. Not that our practices are perfect by any means. You know, we try to generate a lot of adversity and, and different things in practice so that the games seem easy to us. But we just, you know, there's still just a big gap in carryover. Short turnaround for the team as they head to Vanderbilt on Sunday for an afternoon game. The Florida men's basketball team will also be in action this weekend when they host Arkansas. The Gators are coming off a road win against the Crimson Tide and hope that they bring that momentum back home with them. With Arkansas ranked second in the conference and averaging 81.7 points per game, they won't be going down without a fight. Tip-off is set for 1 p.m. on Saturday. And from Golden Ocala, the LPGA began its third day of action this morning. South Korean rookie Hana Chang held the lead coming into today, but is now tied for second with Na Young Choi, 12 under. Currently, Lydia Coy leads the field at the Coates Golf Championship with a 13 under par score. The final round will continue tomorrow in Ocala. We are just days away from the biggest game in the year in the NFL. The New England Patriots and the Seattle Seahawks will face off in Super Bowl 49. The Seattle Seahawks are one win away from having the first back-to-back -back Super Bowl championships since the Patriots in 2004. Russell Wilson is the youngest quarterback in the league to start two Super Bowls. It will be a clash of quarterbacks as Tom Brady and the Patriots try to ground the Seahawks' dreams. If Brady leaves Phoenix Stadium with a win, he would become the third quarterback in NFL history to win four Super Bowl titles. Kickoff is scheduled for 6.30 on Sunday. More news after the break. Stay with us.